Hey guys, this is Anthony Morganti. I am MrPhotographer.com. In this video, I'm going to demonstrate how to use Topaz Labs Denoise AI as a plugin in Luminar 4. Now we're going to be working on this image of the King Cobra and it was shot at a very high ISO and you can see that there's a considerable amount of noise in it, particularly in this darker area below the Cobra's head. Now in the description below this video, I'll have a list of all the equipment and settings I used to capture this image. Now, it is recommended that whenever you reduce noise in an image that you do it very early in your workflow, and that goes for any noise reduction software you happen to be using, including Denoise AI. But, assuming you're working on a RAW file, there are some things you should do first because you're going to use the ability to do those things after you use Denoise AI, and I'll explain more as I go along. One of those things you should do first is if you're shooting with a DSLR and it requires lens corrections, go to the Canvas Panel Lens Geometry tab and enable the lens corrections uh, to get those done. Another thing you should do before using Denoise AI is go to the Light Panel or Essentials Panel, the Light tab. And if you're going to use a white balance that's in this dropdown, do that because you're going to lose that ability to use that or change that uh, when after you send the image into Denoise AI. For this image, I think the white balance is fine. Finally, uh, if you're going to use a profile other than the Luminar default profile, do that now as well because you're going to uh, lose that ability to uh, use a different profile. Now for this image, I'll use the Luminar default profile. So really at this point, I'm ready to send this image into Denoise AI, and then all the other adjustments I'll do after it comes back from Denoise AI, uh, meaning any uh, tone adjustments, color adjustments, and so on. So to send an image into a plugin when you're in Luminar 4, go up to Edit, down to Plugin, and if you own Aurora HDR, that will show up here as well. And right below that will be the last used plugins you happen to use, uh, have used. And of course, um, I happen to have used Topaz Sharpen and Topaz Denoise recently, so they're showing up there. Uh, if you've never used a plugin, nothing will be there. Below that will be Other, and there, there will list all your plugins. And this is where Denoise AI should be if you haven't used it as of yet. Now, if it isn't here, Go to Other Plugin at the very top, and a Finder or Explorer window will appear, and you could navigate to where the plugin is on your system and execute the plugin from that point. After you do that, it should show up in that list going forward. So in my case, you noticed it was there. So I'm going to go to Edit, Plugins, and then I'm going to go to Topaz Denoise AI. So now it's preparing this image to go into Denoise. And in a second, a warning box should pop up. Not a warning, an info box. It disappeared just as quickly. But it sent the image over into uh, Denoise AI. Now, I have um, videos on how to use all the features of Denoise. I'm not going to go into all the different uh, things you could do in Denoise because I already covered that in prior videos. In the description below this video, I'll have a link to a playlist which shows all my Topaz Labs videos and you could watch it there. So for this image, uh, it's, it has a quite a bit of noise. It was shot at a very high ISO, I think something like 12,800 if I remember right. So I am going to um, add quite a bit of noise or quite a bit of noise, uh, remove noise slider to it is what I'm trying to say. And I'm going to sharpen it slightly, uh, maybe even less than that because it is pretty sharp. Don't really have to worry too much about sharpening. And then I'm going to click update up here because I have auto update preview off. I'll click update and see if these settings gave me satisfactory results. And you can see it's generating a preview right here. Um, my system is very old. This is a 2013 iMac, so it is relatively old. And when I run the software to record my screen, uh, like I'm doing right now, it kind of slows everything down a little bit more. So if you have a newer computer, it should go much faster for you. Um, so you can see it did a great job of removing the noise. Um, if I go up here and click on original, there's before and there's after. There's before 
and there's after. So it removed the noise. So I'm going to go down here and click Apply. And now it's going to actually process the image uh, and remove the noise. And then it will reopen back up into Luminar 4. And I'll fast forward the video through this part and we'll appear again in Luminar 4. All right, we're back in Luminar 4, and this is our noise reduced image. If I zoom in, you could see that the noise is all cleaned up, and I could process it from this point. Now, I had mentioned that we should do those few things uh, to the image in Luminar 4 before we send it into Denoise AI because you'll lose the capability or the ability to do those things afterwards. Um, more specifically, for example, we're in the light tab now. And I mentioned white balance drop down. If I click on that drop down, you can see the only choice now is as shot. So the other options disappeared. Also, if I go to advanced settings, you'll see profiles aren't even there anymore. So you lose that ability. Now, specifically, what Denoise AI did is it created a whole new layer. It's the Topaz Denoise AI layer. So all the noise reduction is on this layer. Now you may be thinking that you could just turn this layer off and go to the layer below it. Now the layer below it has the noise on it and the layer below it you could go uh, to the essentials panel, you could go to the light tab and you could go to the drop down and everything's there and let's just pick something ridiculous like tungsten, right? So we'll click tungsten and then I'll go to the advanced settings and the profiles are there and I could pick, you know, let's say a monochrome yellow profile so something just really crazy right but when you go back up to your layers and you turn back on the denoise ai layer you can see it's a stamped layer it just overwrites everything below it so you need to do those adjustments that i mentioned before you send the image into denoise ai now uh, this background layer is really irrelevant now it doesn't affect the image at all uh, we have this stamped layer. So now we could process it uh, from this point as we see fit. One thing I forgot to mention is this is an uncropped image. And I do recommend that you send an image uncropped into, into Denoise AI. Denoise AI works best when it has a lot of pixels to look at, to uh, compare, and to work with. So if you crop the image ahead of time, it has less pixels to work with and the noise reduction often isn't as effective. So send the entire full resolution image into Denoise AI, get your noise reduction, then when it comes back into Luminar, crop it at that point. Now I don't want to crop this, but if I did, this is the point I would do it. So I could come in and then just kind of do some quick processing to this uh, image here. Like this, let's just call it a day. Do that. So you could go to details, add a little bit of detail. Like that. So you do your processing from this point forward. And that's it. That's how you use Denoise AI as a plugin in Luminar 4. Very effective uh, combination. It works great. Thank you, everyone who watches my videos. I really do appreciate it. I'll talk to you guys soon. <laughs>